KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years, Matson and the Adahi Tanu Program, gold sponsors of the Guam Micronesia Island Fair, Cars Plus remind you to put your phone down while driving, distractions won't get you there, heads up Guam, IP&E, fueling excellence, McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and steaks, ribs, seafood, and our famous fresh garden bar, Ruby Tuesday, good times you can taste. Coming up on Primetime, a bill by Congressman Michael Sinicolas puts Guam's war claimants another step closer to finally getting paid. Plus, Chris Barnett has reaction to the recent termination of Guam's state historic preservation officer from local activists. And a ribbon cutting was held for a new central police precinct. Hafede, good evening. I'm Julius Santos. War claimants are another step closer to getting paid as a bill by Congressman Michael Sinicolas passed a House Natural Resources Subcommittee markup hearing today. Nestor Lecanto reports. The measure by Congressman St. Nicholas corrects a technical flaw in the law by former Delegate Madeline Bordalio that will allow the Treasury Department to release money that's already been set aside for payouts. The language contained in H.R. 1365 was drafted in consultation with the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. Department of the Interior to ensure the intended outcome of the Loyalty Recognition Act is made whole. And at this time, Mr. Chairman, I would like to further enter into the record with unanimous consent uh, a letter from uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary Michael De Roma uh, from the U.S. Treasury um, affirming basically that the language in 1365 would in fact remedy the uh, structural deficiencies in the previous statute without any objections, Mr. Chairman. Former Delegate Bordalio had pushed through a provision in the 2017 National Defense Authorization Act that sets aside a portion of Section 30 money, taxes paid by federal employees that are rebated to GovGuam, as a funding source for war claims. In his brief remarks, Sir Nicholas also acknowledged the patience and perseverance of what many have called Guam's greatest generation, the survivors of World War II. This occupation resulted in over three years of brutality for the people of Guam, who endured forced marches, forced labor, rapes, beheadings, and countless other atrocities at the hands of foreign occupiers at war with the United States. Since this time, the impacted people have on multiple occasions sought redress for these sufferings and have petitioned the United States as it absolved Japan at the conclusion of the war and as a gracious victor assumed responsibility for post-war peace. During the markup meeting, Sir Nicholas acknowledged his predecessors for laying the groundwork and Speaker Tina Munya Barnes and the Guam Republican Caucus for submitting letters in support of the bill. The measure now goes back to the full committee for further action. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lecanto. Thank you, Nestor. Meanwhile, reacting to the war claims bill, Governor Lulian Guerrero says she's excited for Congressman St. Nicholas, calling it, quote, a real good step for him, end quote. But the governor says she will continue with her own plan to pay the survivors' claims locally. The good thing about all this is now there's a big push for the war claims and people are getting really uh, passionate about it, which uh, I think is an uh, exciting thing. And so they are, you know, we're going to continue with our way of advancing the payments for the war survivors um, and then work very closely to make it so that there'll be the continuous uh, payment for all of the uh, war claims. The governor is working with Speaker Tina Munya Barnes, who is drafting a bill on the local payouts. No specific timeline has been announced, though officials have said they hope to make the payments ahead of the 75th liberation anniversary, which is July 21st. In other news, the governor says she does not have a reaction to the firing of State Historic Preservation Officer Linda Uggen, but plenty of others do. Chris Barnett reports. Fresh off the plane. Governor Lulian Guerrero says she was clueless about the controversial firing of State Historic Preservation Officer Linda Uggen. I just found out yesterday uh, on my way back, so I don't have any details, so I don't have any reaction to it right now. I'm going to be meeting with my people to figure out, you know, what the issue was, what was the concern. The issue? Uggen's union rep Bob Koss says her termination was retaliation for a grievance she filed against Parks and Rec head Rich Ibanez. Dr. Ron McNinch of UOG's Public Administration School sent a letter to the media calling out Ibanez for being a poor manager who doesn't understand GovGuam personnel rules and regs. What really bothers me is she had a grievance and this agency head disciplined her 
for filing the grievance. It's obvious in this case from everything reported, there was no progressive discipline. Despite calls from senators and activists to reinstate Ugin Ashippo, the governor is moving full steam ahead with plans to permanently replace Ugin, saying she's aware Ibanez may not be qualified to sit as acting Shippo. I'm thinking about putting someone else as acting and then calling out for resumes for it. Meanwhile, Senator Sabina Perez, who was elected senator after serving in the ranks of build-up related activist group Pertehi Latexan, says Uggen's firing has left the island vulnerable. It was a shock to me. Um, it was unexpected. Um, and I think that um, the termination is questionable considering the, the lack of due process. Senator Kelly Marsh Titano, who also rose to senator from the ranks of Pertehi Latexan, had a totally different take. The senator saying she doesn't have any issues with Uggen's firing or Ibana's replacing her as Shippo. I want to let the process run through its course without trying to or or having some uh, weight one way or the other. Meanwhile, independent Guahan's Victoria Leon Guerrero says Uggen's firing couldn't come at a worse time. This really isn't the time to take somebody who's been so involved in the process out of the picture when we really need someone who's vocal. We've been calling and messaging Ibanez for two days and still no response, while Senator Perez shares her concerns about him serving as acting Shippo. He's coming late into the game and doesn't have that historical knowledge that's necessary to oversee these projects. Senator Perez is again calling on the governor to push for a halt to the construction of the firing range, given the discovery of what the military itself calls significant new ancient sites with Laddy period artifacts. Perez says Adeloup's silence on this issue is deafening. Now is the time. If we want to protect these sites, now is the time to, to make a strong statement to protect it. And um, we're not hearing that right now. While nearly two dozen activist groups have called for a meeting with the Magahaga to talk about their concerns with the way the military is handling the discovery of new ancestral sites and the artifacts in them, Leon Guerrero tells KUAM News the military has good programs in place, citing what she says is their protection of the last mature fire tree on Guam. We asked her if she was concerned about the military's handling of artifacts on ancient sites. They found artifacts. They haven't yet, uh, I think, validated whether it's a historic artifact or not. That's in the process. But the process is like any other development outside of the base. Independent Guahan, meanwhile, disagreed with the governor's assertion that there isn't a problem with the way the military handles ancestral sites and artifacts. I don't believe the military knows how to respectfully uh, treat our uh, historical and culturally significant and sacred sites um, because their goal is one thing, which is to build their base, and they will move anything that's in the way. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. In the meantime, Senator Therese Terlahi met with the governor this afternoon and issued the following statement after that meeting. Quote, it's a disadvantage to Guam to ignore the concerns the SHPO has raised about the frequency of new discoveries and to start from scratch to educate someone new about the history and nuances of these projects and the potential harm to these sites. End quote. In other news, a ceremony was held this morning to open the doors officially to the Guam Police Department's new headquarters. Government officials, members of the Guam Police Department, along with friends and family, were present at the official ribbon-cutting ceremony for the newly constructed Central Police Precinct in Sinahanya. HUD officials were also at the event to help open the doors to the block grant-funded facility. Police Chief Stephen Ignacio says it's been a long time coming and that the men and women of GPD are excited to finally make the move. We've really outgrown uh, the old Agatnya Precinct and it's time that we moved into a more modern and uh, larger facility that will meet the needs of the community and our precinct. Moving from a uh, 3,000 square foot facility to a, a three times that size, you know, uh, it, it leaves a lot of uh, breathing room and it really makes, you know, the, the work easier, you know, and then they're going to have modern equipment that, that they can use uh, to uh, do their jobs. Gura Executive Director Ray Taposnia says his agency has been working diligently for the last six months to meet the timeline set by the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration and he's excited for this day. Chief Ignacio expects to move into the new precinct within the next 30 days. The chief, in his speech, noted the significant jurisdictions that fall under the central precinct. HPC is at the heart of patrol operations. The three branches of government all fall within the jurisdiction of Agatnya Precinct Command. The legislative and the judicial branches in Agatnya and the executive branch in Adelu. In addition, the institutions of higher learning, which include the University of Guam and the Guam Community College, also fall within the, within the purview of HPC. 
Overall, the precinct will serve approximately 53,000 island residents once fully operational. The 10,000-square-foot facility features separate holding areas for minors and adults, backup water tank and power generator, a processing section adjacent to a sally port, multiple administrative offices, a training room, briefing room, and multiple interview rooms. During his speech, the chief mentioned also that GPD received three new vehicles. The new Ford F-350, which will be used to tow our 41-foot Brunswick uh, vessel, used for boating enforcement and assistance with search and rescue. We have two GMC Savannah vans, which are outfitted with an internal prisoner transport system, each capable of transporting up to 10 prisoners per van. According to Ignacio, the total cost for the three vehicles is just over $200,000, with the truck at $73,000 and each van costing approximately $64,000. Chief Ignacio thanked Gura for their partnership in constructing the new Central Command, citing their help in building the Dededo Precinct in 2006 and the Agate Precinct in 2011. He thanked also the different command staff that work closely with Gura, the GPD civilian support staff who are helping to fully furnish the facility, the Office of Technology, and those present to celebrate the event. Pictures of two men circulating on social media help police officers identify suspects connected to a theft investigation that occurred in the village of Chalampago. On June 18th, detectives from the Guam Police Department's Criminal Investigation Division were following up on the theft complaint and were able to locate the suspects. They were identified as 44-year-old Ian David Waki and 43-year-old Glenn Pangalinen Akfaji. Both men are from the village of Zotnia. According to police spokesperson Paul Tapao, when Waki was located, he was in possession of a vehicle that had been reported as unauthorized use. Detectives also found a handgun inside the car. Waki and Akfaji were arrested on multiple charges. They were booked, both booked and confined. The Guam Regional Medical City announced it will no longer provide urgent care services effective Sunday. In a news release, the private hospital said its emergency department will remain open and will continue to screen patients for the medical emergencies in compliance with federal law. But GRMC advises patients who go to the ER that their insurance providers may not cover medical services that are later, de uh, later determined not to be life-threatening. The hospital is discontinuing urgent care services as part of ongoing restructuring efforts. Last week, it announced a layoff of about 40 employees. Urgent care is defined in the American Academy of Urgent Care websites as walk-in services for illness or injury that would not result in disability or death if not treated immediately. Also, the Guam Department of Education confirms John Holy II is no longer an employee with the agency. GDOE spokesperson Issa Baza says the administrative investigation has been completed. The 66-year-old para-educator was arrested in May for child abuse, assault, and official misconduct. The arrest stems from allegations that he assaulted a four-year-old special needs student at UPI Elementary School. The Guam Department of Education has also wrapped up its administrative investigation into JROTC instructor at George Washington High School. GDOE spokesperson Issa Baza confirms Man Manjo Quintaniza is no longer an employee. He was under investigation for alleged misconduct and having inappropriate relations with a student. The investigation was launched last month. We'll stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained. Whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. The next generation galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O displays the most innovative galaxy screen yet. Capture the wider world. Take stunning photos with a 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices. Don't just stand out, stand apart.
Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're gonna be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're gonna be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. When it comes to power and performance, nothing compares to Dodge. And right now at Cars Plus and Mighty, you can save thousands on many Dodge vehicles in stock during our Dodge Performance Days. Like a new 2019 Grand Caravan SE, save $42.50 or save $61.50 on a new Durango SXT. Looking for more power? Take home a new Charger SXT Plus today for only $37,689. Or save over seven grand on a new Challenger GT. Get more power and performance at Cars Plus and Mighty during Dodge Performance Days. Cars Plus, driven by you. At this hour, the Guam Department of Education is gathering input from the community on its plans to convert, convert Chief Brody Memorial School into a new central middle school. Discussions on the conversion and its feasibility have been ongoing for more than a year. During the recent Guam Education Board meeting, members discussed a letter from Committee Chair on Education Vice Speaker Telena Nelson questioning whether GDOE explored converting Chief Brody Memorial School instead to a K-8 through grade school. Board members James Lujan... When this came about, uh, we, we did our, our, our job, we, we, we researched, we, we had our, our public hearings. Apparently, uh, the senator wants us to do it again. If we are going to do something like that, you know, we, we have to tread lightly because if we're going to uh, turn Chief Brody into a K-8, through it's going to ricochet at the morning elementary school and LBJ. And uh, we may not be able to fit the students in the way we're going to fit them in right now. The GEB agreed to hold a meeting and work session on the issue. As for tonight's meeting, it is being held at the Timunian Community Center. Another meeting on the conversion is scheduled for July 10th at the Dededo Senior Citizens Center. While the Agatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority gets on its feet after an informal board meeting this week, its oversight chair, Senator Kelly Marsh Titano, convened an informational briefing to get everyone on the same page. As Tomas Magnolia reports, it was apparent there was a lot of catching up to do. The informational meeting was meant to discuss the future of Haganya, but today's earlier discussion focused on the past and debated the facts of the present. Oversight Vice Chair Speaker Tina Munoz Barnes, representatives from HRRA and GIDA, took part in the meeting and exchanged questions about the details of the plan dating back to 2003. With a small staff, there are still questions about where previous meeting minutes on a USB drive are in order to comply with the Open Government Act. Senator Marsh Titano submitted a letter to obtain them by today. Planning staff Joseph Santos says the office needs help. Can we have a copy of those USBs? You know, but yes, uh, yes, you can. I just need to look at it. Okay. I just got back from a. Uh, a Is there anybody else that can help look help you look for it? Well, uh, hire somebody because. No, no, uh, no I'm need, not asking to hire. Is somebody. there anybody that? HRRA Director Lacia Casillas is off island, but told KUAM that she believes they are answering all of the senator's questions and remains committed to be transparent. She said she informed the senator of her travel two weeks before the hearing. She says that it's simply going to take time with no proper resources. She's been the only active staff until Santos recently arrived on island after three months of being ill. Later in the meeting, Barnes offered to find help to transfer the files after Santos said the office does not have the funds to purchase a thumb drive. Meanwhile, Adelip calls for agency input by July 15. That's shortly before the first official HRRA board meeting. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglonia. Thank you, Tomas. The Republican Party of Guam held a watch party to celebrate President Donald Trump's re-election bid announcement. We are enthusiastically excited about the re-election of our president, uh, who continues to make America great again. 
Key GOP party personnel on hand for the watch party, which was held at the Java Junction in Haganya. Republicans applauded the president's speech, which was rife with what was proven popular with the Trump base. Fake news, criticism of political correctness, and shots fired at the Trump's political enemies. Trump also repeatedly slammed his 2016 opponent, Hillary Clinton. In his speech, Trump vowed to, quote, keep America great, end quote. It is not clear who Trump will face in the 2020 presidential election. Well, six justice-involved veterans have successfully completed the Veterans Treatment Court program. It is an intensive program designed to connect veterans suffering from substance use and or mental health disorders, which the benefits and treatment they have earned. Superior Court Judge Maria Senzon presided over the ceremony held this morning at the Guam Judicial Center. Veterans Treatment Courts expedite access to veterans-specific resources, including benefits and treatment earned through military service by involving the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Healthcare Networks, the Veterans Benefits Administration, and State Departments of Veterans Affairs, to name a few. This is the sixth graduating class since its launch in September 10, 2015, bringing the total number of graduates to 35. Well, on Wednesday evening, it was a celebration of local art, music, and craft beers. A dedication and unveiling of an 18-foot mural was held at the Guam Brewery Tap House at the Blue Lagoon Plaza in Tumon. The original mural was created by local artist Gino Dotwin and depicts the island's passion for delicious crafted beverages from tuba, making traditions to the Guam Brewery Tap House and their craft beers. Well, Dave Delgado is next with sports. Keep it right here. What's that? An alpha insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our alpha insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is. Target acquired. Agent Alpha. Yes! Yo, Jay, uh, you sure you want to be washing your car right now, man? Not now, Kim. I'm washing Betsy. And she has to be spotless, bro. Clouds are coming in fast. It looks fine to me. Look again. It looks fine, Kevin. It looks fine. You know what makes more sense than Guam's weather? Using your Bank of Guam credit card at any Shell station to save 6% on gas purchases. Call, click, or visit for more details. Make more sense. Bank of Guam, the People's Bank. Member FDIC. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. How can you make McDonald's hot and deliciously juicy? Juicy Quarter Pounder even more delicious? One word. Bacon. The new Fresh Beef Quarter Pounder Bacon or Deluxe. Two new ways to leave you speechless. Pair it with any size soft drink for just one dollar. What do you get when you add lettuce and tomato to McDonald's hot and deliciously juicy Fresh Beef Quarter Pounder? You get fresh, on fresh, on fresh. The new Fresh Beef Quarter Pounder Deluxe or Bacon. Two new ways to leave you speechless. Pair it with any size soft drink for just one dollar. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get to some footage from the point guard and shooting guard camp being held at the Guam National Basketball Training Center in Teason. But first off, a look at our men's national golf team preparing for the upcoming Pacific Games. Check it out. Our men's national golf team will be heading into the 2019 Pacific Games confident and experienced in off-island competition. Daryl Poe is the team captain and will be guiding the team in his first appearance at the Games in Apia, Samoa. What I'm hearing now is the course is a short course, just over 6,000 yards. Uh, I have the guys right now and the ladies are really toning in on their short game. Tone back off the driver a little bit, think about positioning. Uh, thinking about uh, those 100, 110 yard shots in and basically getting up and down around the greens. The greens are very small and uh, like I said, it's forced layups. It won't be a lot of drivers. So uh, a lot of our guys are big bombers, but those skills won't be used at this tournament. It's going to be all tactical, tactical. With every shot having to be right on point with their targets, Guam is locked in 
and ready to make a run at meddling in Samoa. First thing when we get on the ground, we're going to look at the turf and see if it's, uh, if it's really hard, if it's soft. Uh, the weather should be good. Uh, it's kind of tropical like it is now. It's going to cool down just a little bit uh, compared to Guam. But uh, our guys, uh, we practice on all the courses here in Guam. All are a little different. All the textures on the ground are a little different. So we'll be prepared. Guam has done rather well at the games, sitting in the middle of the pack. Teams on the radar will be Fiji, New Caledonia, and Cook Island. The men's team has been really close in the past and have a really good shot at bringing home some hardware. It's a team of four, so four play, and then they take the top three scores. For the men's team, we got four players. Unfortunately, for the women's team, a couple of our ladies dropped out, so we're down to three players uh, for the ladies' team. So they're going to have to step up their game, and, and, and all three of them are going to count. But that being said, uh, we really do have a good team. Team Guam has, has a good chance of meddling this year. The next level point guard and shooting guard camp has drawn out some of the island's top up-and-coming young ballers. Training is done Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 in the morning at the Guam National Training Center in Tizen. Unfortunately, there's, you know, when a kid grows up here on the island and they're the tallest kid on the team, you know, they're automatically put at the four and five spots. Every player that develops here on the island uh, must develop guard skills, so that's why we kind of put together the point guard and, and two guard clinic. Players that have been taught at the four and five position, we feel it's essential that they develop guard skills over the off season. Um, you know, and just just building their IQ from the perimeter will will you know help develop Guam basketball. Camp coaches are focusing on pick and roll reads, transition attack moves, man to man defense, perimeter, and post play defense. Our aim at this at this clinic and camp is really to develop the IQ from the guard position. Uh, you know whether that's uh, making uh, the right reads in the full court, um, understanding how to handle full court pressure, uh, something as simple as you know entry passes into the post. All these essential skills uh, that you know that guards need to develop. We're we're teaching here at the clinic. In other news, GTA commits $100,000 to the Guam National Tennis Federation. GNTF is a nonprofit corporation whose purpose is to advance, encourage, and promote all levels of tennis on Guam for youth and adults, both recreational and competitive. The funds will go towards the development and construction of the Guam National Tennis Center, a world-class facility. There will be a total of six sponsored courts. The GTA court will be a tennis court for the U-12 youth. This is a monumental milestone for our island and the tennis community.